Hey, what's going on, y'all? I hope that y'all are enjoying <clears throat> this Saturday afternoon. I pray that all went well for you and that you had time where you please don't bark. Oh, he's going to bark. You might hear dogs barking and all that because I'm walking anywhere the alley. And so people have their dogs and it's kind of noisy, but but I hope y'all are all having a good day, a relaxing day. I'm walking in my alley for a reason that uh, I'm going to explain in a little while. And uh, I just woke up with it this morning on my heart. And when I wake up with something this morning, or when I wake up in the morning with something on my heart to talk about, I want to kind of try to get it down and uh, cement it because I know encased in it somewhere after so many words, maybe too many words, uh, there's something for somebody else that's listening on the other end that y'all can learn. One of you lovely rock stars might benefit from this. Um, recently, and I mentioned it previous in one of our walks, that I was going to start therapy, going to therapy, <clears throat> and uh, start dealing with some things that happened. One thing in particular I talked about was the time that I got attacked by a pit bull. Um, and uh, when I first started going to therapy, I started going last month. And when I first started going, he was like, well, uh, for the first maybe 15 or 20 minutes, it was just like a get to know you. And he sent me this form to fill out to kind of, you know, get to know me, find out some of the things that are going on. Some of the things I've already been through, some of the things I'm dealing with now. And, you know, and, you know, just the overall kind of questionnaire. What do you like? What are the things you like? What are the things you don't like? How would you say you are? That sort of stuff. And so we just sort of went over that and I sent that to him before I met him. Um, first session I went in person and from the first session, just going into his office, I felt before I even opened my mouth, I felt uh, this release. I don't know. I mean, what I do, because I've been to counseling sessions and therapy and stuff like that. And before I go into uh, a therapy session, I always try to nail down exactly to the best of my ability what it is I'm going in there for. I don't want to waste my time and I don't want to waste their time. I kind of want to have an idea and not be scattered and all over the, you know, all over the map with stuff. Because you only have maybe 30 minutes or an hour and you want to maximize your time. So you want to be specific about what it is you're going in there for. And so I always, before I go to any therapy session, I always pray and ask the Lord, Lord, to show me my heart and show me where it is that I need to aim my direction. Where should my focus be? You know, what should I tackle first? That was, you know, after the get to know you session, that was one of the things he asked. He said, okay, tell me like the top three things that's going on that's really on your heart, that's troubling you and, you know, places where we should start really looking at unpacking. And so I told him the three things. And uh, he said, out of those three things, what is where you're struggling the most? Which one is the one you're struggling with the most? And interestingly enough, the minute he said that, uh, 
the spirit pushed to my mind the main thing and what the spirit showed me uh where my struggle really was was not where i thought it was because what was getting ready to come out of my mouth is what i thought i was struggling with where i thought i was having the most difficulty but as it turns out what i thought was not what the spirit saw and what the spirit saw he brought to my he brought to my remembrance and that's what came out of my mouth and when it came out of my mouth it shocked me because it was something that happened before my mom died so that was easily six years ago and it was something that i know changed me in a million different ways uh but i didn't realize how impactful it was and what it actually did some things you go through and they're so painful and so memorable that you uh you never forget it and um but you can get up and go on and you know it was a pivotal thing but it doesn't seem to be one that you couldn't overcome because you feel like okay this was just this was a little earth shattering but i'm good and that's what i thought about what i'm talking to y'all about today or that's what i had thought i thought okay it, this was something but you know not that it wasn't a big deal it was but it didn't seem to be somewhere where i would consider myself stuck but it is it is uh and so the one thing uh that i brought up to him was the uh dealings i had with the dog and walking i was walking me and my husband were walking one day getting ready to go for a long walk it was a saturday that i remember and our daughter was at the house and uh we were walking down the alley and some fairly new neighbors had moved in they had a three-year-old and a five-year-old and i would see them out front playing well i noticed during the week when i was walking he and his wife were and i know they had a dog but i'd never seen the dog so they must have kept him in the house because their back their backyard was open they hadn't they hadn't put up a fence so you could see their backyard and you know it was at the time where people were you know doing stuff around the house and stuff and so they decided that they were going to build their own fence and so that's what they were doing and they were building it and it looked so nice and i was like wow i wish that you know me and my husband had uh the world with all to be able to do that that would save us a ton of money because he works for Lowe's, so it wouldn't take anything to get it and i'm sure it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal you know just measure out what we need and put it up there i know at one point in time when we first moved in we had a fence but it was super raggedy raggedy and he and uh, our brother-in-law put the fence up. And uh, during the during the tornado that came and hit our house in 2019, F3 tornado, it took our roof and our fence. And we had somebody from the church uh, who has a fence business, roof business, come and kind of repair it and and that's how it's been because we hadn't had the money to get a new fence but we need a new fence but that's totally off the subject anyway they were out there building their fence putting it together and um they had you know done a good job and we were out there and we were kind of standing there watching and i'm sorry if it gets a little loud uh but we're going down the street now and it's make it a little loud i'm gonna try to get on to the back of my alley anyway get to the point 
stay focused. Uh, so we had, they had taken a break in building their fence. And um, we were just admiring it and looking at it. And I don't know where their kids were, but they were out there. And part of their fence was still done. They just had a little bit left to finish. And it looked amazing. I don't know if they had a business where they did it, but it just looked very professional and very nice. And so we were admiring their fence. And out there with them was their dog. Unleashed, no collar, no tags. Pit bull, girl. She was uh, sort of like a tawny brown color. And she looked to be uh, not a puppy, but a little bit older than a puppy. She wasn't like a full, full pit bull, but she was, she was a pretty big chunky thing. Gorgeous. I had heard her in the house bark, but I'd never seen her. So this was the first time I saw her. And she was standing next to my neighbor and and I was looking at his fence. And we were standing between his fence. There was his fence. And then there was a matter of fact I'll show you. Uh, this is our alleyway. But we were standing in the center of the alley, just like we're walking right now. And we were between his fence and the fence directly across. And his dog was standing there with him. And I turned around to look at her because I'd never seen her before. And I said, oh, what a pretty. And I don't, I don't, rem I don't really recall much after that. All I know is she charged me. She charged me. She knocked me from the center of uh, the center of where I'm walking right now into the fence directly across from their house. My head hit the back of the fence and my body hit the back of the fence. I was flat on my back. The only reason why I wasn't completely laid out flat on my back was the fence. So from my head all the way down to the back of my thighs, hit the back of this fence hard. Hard. Hey, buddy. Hey, friend. Let's see if I can find uh, which fence. I think it was this fence right here. Yep, it was. So this was not built. Uh, but yeah, but it was this fence. So I went from here. The dog and the owner was here. And I was here. And I went from here to the back of this fence right there. It was like slow motion. I remember hitting the fence, impacting with the fence. And for seconds afterwards, I don't remember much else. I remember sitting there with my head spinning and it was like a slow motion deal. My husband was frozen to the spot. Uh, his, this, the neighbor's wife was frozen to the spot. Uh, I remember, um, I remember her screaming to try to stop the dog. And I remember the man screaming, get off her, get off her. The dog was not, nah, no collar, no tags, no leash. I remember the dog, uh, lunging at my neck. I remember him lunging at my thigh. I remember him or, or her, because it was a girl, 
getting my pants and tearing two holes in my pants, biting me twice through my pants. Now I'm laying there at that point helpless, not knowing what was going on. And this dog is mauling me and I'm thinking everybody is looking. Some people are yelling, but some folks ain't doing anything. They just like frozen to the spot. Nobody's trying to physically get this dog off of me. So finally the man reaches to the back of the dog's neck and the dog finally leaves. Now again, I'm there, I'm dazed, head spinning. I don't know what's happened next. I'm not really, it's not, it's like an out of body experience. And I'm like, you know, but I'm trying to be calmly, be calm and think rational. The man is like, oh my gosh, you, you all right? Uh, uh, you know, and he's just scrambling because he's probably thinking, I'm gonna sue the drawers off of me. Now I'm not thinking about any of that, but I know that he was. And just a, a, a multitude of things was taking place while this was going on. You know, I had to take myself to the emergency room and it was just a big ordeal. I had to deal with uh, animal control because I call it animal control on the dog. Um, because I asked them for tags and they brought me dog tags and the dog tags were like from the year before. I was like, well, where are his cur her current tags? And who oh, no, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway so I said well I didn't tell them but I called animal control and animal control came and got her checked her out come to find out she had a rabies shots and all of that stuff and but she didn't have tags so the neighbor got fined for the tags and fined for having an un, un, uh, unleashed dog and all of that so he had to pay quite a bit of money and he had to pay money to animal control to get the dog back because they held him 30, held her 30 days to make sure that there was no underlying stuff. So it was a big, huge ordeal. And from that ordeal, uh, is, is led, it led me into like 2017 when all of my health problems and things just sort of dovetailed. It was like, when everything for me mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically spiraled out of control. And uh, there was a lot involved. I just, I never connected the two until now to get any kind of help. And so I, now that I've connected them and I understand how they connect and how impactful they were. Now I can, okay, okay, okay. Now I can really look at dealing with, oh y'all, I cannot wait. Those are irises and gladiolus and my rose bushes coming out. I can't wait for that to come out. Okay, friends, okay. Okay, goodness gracious me. Okay. All right. My neighbor's dogs. I'm gonna go to, the front. Go to the front, cause they're just cutting up. Um. So knowing that, and knowing how these things connected, uh, really was a starting point. But I had no idea that I was carrying all that in my body. I didn't realize how, how it had affected me. And like I said, I'm going through therapy now and we're focusing on it. And uh, he's giving me a lot of mental exercises and things to try and do and we're making progress but he told me he said you are 
He said, you are, are a responder. You seem to respond well and seem to be really open to the things that uh, I'm trying and you seem to be all in. And he said, he said, I just want to tell you, I don't want to scare you, but I want to tell you that what you're going through is uh, not going to be pleasant or easy. A lot of the memories of what you're going through, because we're digging into it to get to a point where you're able to uh, redirect your thoughts on it and redirect your body's carrying it because you carry traumatic events and things that you have no control over in your body you carry them in your mind with memory but you also carry them in your body physically emotionally spiritually you carry all of those things that you are not dealing with and like i said a long time ago what you don't uh, lift up to the Lord and lift out in therapy, you carry that around and it colors everything you do, every decision you make. That's why therapy is important, but that's also probably the number one reason why people, when they start therapy, they quit. Because there, becomes, there comes a point where things get painful, memories get painful, and you're tender and you can't sleep and you get irritable and you get snappy and you get sad and you cry and you are in a place of hurt to the point where you want to just say it's not worth it it's not worth it um and that's where a lot of people quit or they get stuck, you know, why am I having to deal with this? Why am I going back through this? What is this going to do? What is it going to solve? I mean, why is this important? Why can't I just get over it? Why can't I move on? Why am I carrying it? Why can't I just shake it off and get over it, get over it like everybody says? Some things you don't get over with. Some things, while I believe in the power of prayer, I know that I know the physicalities of this body and the mentalities of the mind work together. And some things God has counselors here for you to work out physically. And so you do have to have for some things you do have to have therapy and counseling. You do. You have to have prayer and therapy and counseling. So. Because I've been at this stage in therapy before with childhood issues, I came to a point with the things that happened to me in my childhood and I was just like, I'm going to quit because I was having nightmares and flashbacks and, and the memories of things from 50 years ago uh, were feeling just as fresh as... Uh, if they had just happened five minutes ago. But that's what happens when you are digging down deep to get to the root of things. All of those emotions that you didn't feel or that you tried to stuff down with food or that you tried to stuff down with shopping or that you tried to stuff down with a new man or, or for if you're a man, a new woman or a new job or a new promotion, uh, uh, new subscribers on YouTube. Uh, you can't stuff that down. All of that stuff comes to the surface and nothing can alleviate it except for prayer and counseling, prayer and therapy that gives you the tools to, uh, redirect it in a way that you can uh, move forward in life where the pain is not the way it was where you're able to have a countering cogni cognitive awareness where you're able to reform 
or reshape what happened to, to 2023 standards. You know, that was 2016, 2017, maybe. And this is 2023. And the minute I was sitting in his office and I just mentioned it, it was like it was 2017 for me all over again. The pain, the confusion, the shock, the anger, the hurt, the all of it, all over again. And that let me know that that is what's foremost and that's what I need to be dealing with. And all of those things, while they're painful, they're fantastic. Because what is going to happen when I'm able to reshape this and have the tools to redo this and put this in my arsenal of testimony, of overcoming? Y'all, it's rough. It's rough. But... I know that I'm on an assignment from the Lord. I know that I'm to share portions of my journey that are personal. I know that somebody is going to benefit from it because the Holy Ghost in my waking this morning, the Holy Ghost brought it to my remembrance all over again. He he brought it to my remembrance that it is it is important for any of my rock stars who are going through for me to stress the value in being open to therapy and counseling. He wanted me to stress that to you today. He wanted me to let you know that you're not alone. He wanted me to let you know that though it's going to be spots where it's going to be tough and you're going to want to toss and throw in the towel, It's all going to be worth it because after this, there's going to be a work that he's going to have for you to do that could involve your victory. And there is a place where he wants you to be healed so you can help somebody else on their, their way to healing. And so he woke me up with this this morning and he stayed on me most of the day for it. So I know I I have to do this. I had to do this for myself, but I know I have to do it for somebody else. It's rough, but it's A, necessary, and B, it's going to be worth it all. It really is. I don't know what the Lord is getting ready to do, but I know that wherever he decides to take me next, whatever he decides to do with me and you, I can't take this past trauma with me. I don't know what door is getting ready to open for me, but this is going to be a testimony that I'm going to be shouting and dancing in when I open the door, when, when, when God opens this next door. So that's all I want to say to you rock stars. So I guess whether or not, like it or not, y'all are going on this journey with me here or there in spots. But just consider it if you're if you are struggling uh with things that have happened previously if you see where it's coloring your life and threatening to take it over find a counselor that you can trust but before you do that pray and seek the lord that you that he would help you to find who you would need to talk to and and that your heart and mind would be open to the things that the counselor suggests because in it is healing healing like you would not believe if i look at 2017 all the way up to now if you'd asked me in 2017 i was it was i was in horrible i was in a horrible place if you ask me to look into 2023 and ask me okay after it's all said and done do you think you'd be here i tell you no Because where I was in 2017, I couldn't see a way out of it, but God did. God knew that uh, I would be where I am right now. And he has a hope and a future for you as well. So, just take this and meditate on it and ponder it. And know that uh, I'm here for you. I'll pray for you. My email is in the description of this, uh, and you can 
you can reach out to me. I'm always available for prayer. And just know that, like I said, it, it's rough at times, but it's all going to be worth it. It's all going to be worth it. So this is from me to you. Enjoy this upcoming week and enjoy this evening. And I appreciate you and know that you're not alone on your winning walk.